Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter here again with another Back to Basics video guide for you. And if you don't know what the Back to Basics video guides are, there are a series of videos I've produced and put in a very special playlist called the Back to Basics playlist. And it's a whole range of videos for basic techniques, materials, and things that are common to all terrain building. So everything from basing, the glues we use, the paints, well the glues we use we're covering in this one, but the paints, working with polystyrene, balsa wood, foam board, all sorts of things like that yeah so if you're looking to get into like terrain building you're looking for some core skills check out the back to basics playlist I'll throw a link up to it now as I said this is a back to basics guide to glues and it got me thinking when we were doing the ivy that you know we do actually use lots of glues but I've never done a back to basics video on it so I thought you know although we've done one on PVA my first video ever and it's horrendous and I'm going to have to revisit that sometime next year because I've, I've learned a lot more about PVA. And, you know, we'll redo that one. But I've talked about PVA, but I haven't really talked in general about all the glues. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Now, before we jump into the, the official glues, yeah, a quick word. Now, as terrain builders, we are scavengers and bodgers in nature. Okay, so... Although these are, you know, a wide range of, you know, core glues that we use, yeah, if it sticks, we use it. It's as simple as that. And you will find as you go on that you will end up using tape, blue tack, uh, resin, all sorts of different things to stick things together because it works at the minute and it was at hand and you had some spare. It's the way it goes. But, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I do it. Yeah, loads of people do it. It's just in our nature. Okay, but I want to talk about the core glues and where they fit in terrain building. Okay, so <clears throat> very quickly, yeah, we're going to go through PVA, hot glue, super glue, plastic glue, spray adhesives, latex glues, two part epoxies, and building adhesives and grip adhesives, stuff like that. Now, I don't have all of them, there's a couple of the, the two part epoxies and the grip adhesives I don't have. Yeah, but I'll, we'll chat about those anyway. So, let's start off in this merry pile with PVA. Now, polyvinyl acetate is a water-based, water-soluble glue. Yes, it isn't waterproof, okay? It is the workhorse of terrain building. You'll know it from doing your bases, and you know, most people know PVA, wood glue, white glue. Elmer's is a brand in the US that's quite common. You know, I don't think there's a common brand in the UK, it's just PVA. Uh, now, like I say, it's the workhorse. It's water soluble, yeah. Generally, you know, most people have it in sort of quarter of a litre tubs like this, yeah. If you're looking at doing terrain, then you need to nip down the, to the art shop or the craft shop and pick yourself up a litre bottle, okay. If you're going to be doing a, a lot of terrain, people like proper terrain builders and, you know, professional ones, and myself included, although, you know, I don't take the professional title, yeah, we buy it by the gallon. Okay, because you simply use that much of it. Now, its core uses are gluing most things down, but it works best where they're porous. So woods, uh, polystyrenes, where the surface isn't equal, you know, isn't a smooth, exactly smooth surface. But even then, it works well because because of the holes within polystyrene. Yeah, wood, foam board, card. Yeah, what it doesn't work well on is things like plastics and metals and resins. So the non-porous materials it will glue them down okay but the bond is it isn't good at all to be perfectly honest it takes very little force to separate it now the other thing that's really good about pva is as i said it's water so water soluble so you can mix it with water dilute it down anything from a ratio of sort of one to four to one to ten yeah glue to water to water and use it for sealing Okay, and so, you know, sealing your foliage down, sealing all your rocks down, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's got a typical drying time when it's on thick of probably about 12 to 24 hours, depending on how thick it is. Thin layers dry much quicker. They can dry in, you know, an hour or two. Uh, when it comes to sealing and watering it down, yeah, well, there's a couple of ways of applying it. You can apply it with a brush and dab it on. The problem with that technique is that because PVA is water soluble, if you've used PVA to glue down your flock and your foliage, coming in with lots of water and re-soaking it to seal it with watered down PVA 
can reactivate the glue and essentially everything becomes unstuck. So the brush isn't the best method to use and if you are using it don't go over areas you've already done. You know, keep moving along, keep working on the PVA, that, the stuff that's stuck down and needing sealing rather than going back and working with the wet stuff that's all you've already sort of dabbed on. Yeah, but it's much better to spray it. Now the cheapest way of spraying it is with a spray bottle. Uh, this is a Woodland Scenics one. It's not bad, I picked it up, watch colour. Generally I use a, a cheap one pound uh, a window glass cleaning spray bottle. You know, empty the, the stuff out of it and then just use the bottle. Lately though, I have been using mainly, yeah, a cheap Hornby airbrush. Okay, and this is, I think it's 10 pound. It's an external mix, siphon feed, yeah, and it's great for, you know, knocking, it gives me the control for putting the PVA down. It puts it down much thinner than the other methods. Yeah, and also by using this, you know, I never actually touch what I'm actually resealing. And so you haven't got the issue of flooding it, you haven't got the issue of disturbing it and it becoming unstuck. So yeah, if you are gonna be doing a lot of terrain, yeah, seriously looking at least picking up one of those, okay, for, for resealing work. But you don't need it. You know, I've used the spray bottle for years, yeah, with great effect and, you know, this is just, a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, and a little bit more control. Okay, so that's PVA in a nutshell. Yeah, moving on, yeah, let's talk about hot stuff, hot glue. Okay, now hot glue is essentially, you know, a low temperature plastic. Okay, and the idea is that, you know, you have a gun, yeah, Inside there, there's a heater. You know, you force the glue through. It comes through hot over here. Yeah, all sticky and squadgy. You stuck your stuff down, and then it cools and it sets. Okay. Now, hot glue uh, guns come in various shapes and styles. Yeah, uh, you've got. I think this is 11 or 12 mil. I think this is 7 mil, the, the smaller one. Yeah. Uh, you also get the sticks that, that you get uh, low melt sticks, high melt sticks. You can get variable temperature hot glue guns. Uh, you can get rechargeable, yeah, uh, cordless hot glue guns, and this is brilliant to be perfectly honest, but it takes a lot of recharging in between uses. Uh, you can get glue sticks in different colours, yeah, they don't have to be clear, so you can do, you can do effects, I mean I've used uh, hot glue to do bases, I've used them to do lava effects, you can pull off very basic water effects with hot glue, yeah, but they are very basic. Okay, nowhere near in the sort of style of, you know, using resins and using your, your acrylic compounds for waves and that's so you corking, that sort of stuff. But, you know, cheap and cheerful, yeah, it's a good quick solution. But, as a glue, hot glue sits in the sort of really, really quick and helpful glue, okay? You don't need it, you know, if you want to make terrain, don't think you've got to go out and buy, what you call it? you know, a hot glue gun, because to be perfectly honest, you can get away with 99% of the stuff you want to glue down with PVA, and then you can get super glues just quite cheaply for, you know, odd little bits that, you know, PVA isn't suitable for. Yeah, where hot glue sort of comes in is one, it's, it's quick, okay? It's quick to put down, there's a reasonable amount of control with it, but also it's very quick drying. Yeah, and so one of the benefits of this, uh, when I'm doing hills, what I'll do is I'll make an MDF base, I'll cut my polystyrene to go on top of that base and I'll glue it down with PVA. But while it's still sitting in its wet, I'll get my hot glue and I'll put a couple of little spots of hot glue around it in, in little cracks where I can hide it later. Yeah, that fixes the polystyrene to the MDF, which means I can immediately carry on with texturing it, working on it while it glues to the base. Okay, so that's one of the benefits of hot glue. Hot glue is also really good where you've got difficult irregular surfaces. So uh, things like rocks, you know, if there's a if rocks aren't uniform at the bottom, okay, so if you're trying to glue them down with PVA, you can often get what you get touch points where little bits of the rock that reach down to the base of glues, but most of it isn't glued. Whereas with hot glue, you can put a blob down and because it's thick, it squeezes in and makes a far better bond, okay? The downside of hot glue is, one, it's difficult to clean up if you make a mistake. So that's why I don't do it, use it much on things like buildings and that sort of stuff, because if I go off, you know, it's gonna be quite a bit of a mess 
clean up whereas with PVA you can just you know damp cloth wipe it down it's water soluble uh, hot glue is also really good with clump foliage things because if you think about clump foliage quite often they're spongy and so what you can get is it'll soak the PVA up but you've got those sort of anchor points again and also because it's springy yeah it can often sort of spring away from what you're trying to glue it down to so with large clump foliage yeah hot glue works really well with getting a secure bond very quickly and you know it's a secure bond yeah the real fear with what your clump foliage and pva is if you've only got like one or two sort of points that it's anchoring with yeah then if it gets knocked or something like that it will come away very easily okay uh, because of the nature of clump foliage it's quite loose it's flexible you know what i mean yeah and so hot glue gives a really good seal base for when you're working with clump foliage but it doesn't work with tiny bits that well yeah the other downside of hot glue is as you use hot glue take a breath man right as you use hot glue it's all right i'm talking non-stop just let me grab a brew i haven't even got a brew what a sh what Planning and preparation both. Yeah, right, let's finish off the hot glue. One of the other issues with hot glue is as you watch glue, as you put it down, yeah, as you pull your hot glue gun away from your blob to stick your thing down, yeah, you'll get a wisp, okay, a trail of silver that will cool and dry as, as like, like a wisp, a little hair, a long hair strand, okay? And they can get in the way and they can be a pain in the backside at times, yeah? One quick tip for dealing with those is, you know, as you, as either as you're working or once you've done all your hot gluing and you're ready before you move on to your next stage, give the, the piece a, a quick blast with a hairdryer or a very gentle blast, quick gentle blast with a heat gun. And what that will do is it will quickly melt those away and they'll just disappear. Yeah, so that's one quick tip for working with hot glue. So that's where hot glue sits. Okay, it, it's very quick and efficient. Okay, it's it's reasonably cost effective to be perfectly honest. Once you've got the gun, I mean, you can pick up a gun for a tenner. You know, you can pick them up cheaper than that, but you know, the cheap ones tend to break. Yeah, I picked this one up for about a tenner. Yeah, the glue sticks you can buy fifty, hundred for a couple of quid. So, you know, it's certainly viable. You can also get what you call variable temperature glue guns. Yeah, and the benefit of variable temperature glue guns is. Uh, the hotter the glue, the quicker it sort of moves and the flatter you can get it. Okay, so if you want to really get two pieces really close together, then the hotter it is, the better. Okay, so variable glue guns, you know, they're, they're useful for that sort of stuff. Yeah, generally, if I need to sort of adjust the temperature of my glue gun, yeah, uh, if I want a low temperature, I'll use it just as I've switched it on as soon as it's sort of warming up. If I want a high temperature, I'll watch glue it, I'll wait five minutes and let it really warm up until I start knocking the glue out. Yeah, so don't think you need a variable temperature. I haven't felt the need of a variable temperature yet, so, you know, you don't. Right, so that's hot glue done and PVA glue done. Right, let's talk about super glue. Okay, uh, cheap and nasty uh, gel super glue. Yeah, and I haven't even taken it out of the packet, but some simple lock type liquid super glue. Yeah. Super glue is the opposite to PVA, yeah, whereas this works well with porous surfaces, yeah, this does work well with porous surfaces, but this is what you want to use when you're sort of trying to glue together, you know, plastics, metals, things that aren't porous, your resins, okay. Generally, we use the liquid stuff for fixing down, uh, da 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 little re resin and metal additions to our terrain. The gel stuff comes in more when it comes down to gluing down clump foliage, uh, working with, well generally clump foliage, whether you're doing IV get growth effects or whether you're sticking it down, much like hot glue, it's because it's got this gel base, yeah, that the whole super glue will sit on. Liquid super glue doesn't do that well on those sort of situations because it tends to bleed out with flock and stuff like that and it goes, you know, and it doesn't sit, yeah, long enough to sort of soak up into the clump foliage. And if you're doing it on the side of a building or anything like that, you know, liquid super glue tends to run a lot, so it can be really messy. So generally for the super glues, yeah, we keep these for the spot work. Okay. Now one of the benefits of super glue, much like hot glue, yeah, is it's water resistant. 
yeah which means if we stick something down with super glue or hot glue or another couple of glues i'm going to mention yeah when we flood it with i see it watered down pva that watered down pva will not reactivate that glue now this is especially important where you've got things stuck to the side of things yeah not so much when watch glue when it's just sitting down because you know they can just sit but if you've got stuff stuck to the side of something yeah it's better to have a water resistant glue holding that there while it's soaked in water than a water solvent one because you know there's a good chance if it's a water solvent one and you use pva you're going to come down and it's going to it's going to be all over the uh, all over the base guys trust me yeah so that's where super glue sits generally we don't use tons of it yeah uh super glue works really well when you want to get things with a really close join to them okay where whereas you know because it is liquid or it is a gel it can go really thin whereas the volume of hot glue can actually leave a space between things if they're flat yeah but generally you know if you want something stuck hard water resistant we go with hot glue yeah and you know super glues for the spot stuff yeah and the gel stuff is, is definitely more advantageous than the liquid one so that's super glue done that was quick and easy wasn't it right we're cracking through them what else we've got? We've done PVA super glue. Plastic glue we've got. Right, plastic glue. Okay, it comes in. You can get gel plastic glue. Yeah, I don't really use it to be perfectly honest. I've got some old, really watered down GW stuff. Yeah, and then I've got the, the Revel sort of precision applicator stuff and with the little metal bar in. Yeah. Okay. This is solely for use with plastic kits. It's as simple as that. It, it will glue nothing beyond that. Yeah. So if you're working with styrene, if you're working with plastic hard, evergreen stuff, you know, ooh, you know, texture, anything where you're sticking plastic to plastic, very much like your models. Yeah. Battle zone kits. Uh, what else is plastic out there? War uh, GW kits. Yeah. You using, you know, uh, bits from your bits box, that sort of stuff. That's where that sits. Generally, it's handy to have, but you know, I think I bought this three years ago and it's still half full. So, you know, you don't use tons of it because even when you use it, you know, it's very sparring. Yeah, and generally for terrain builders, you know, I'm assuming most war gamers, are, you know, know how to use plastic glue. And if you don't, yeah, just don't flood it, don't mess around with it. Yeah, and <laughs> use a ventilated room, you know what I mean? Yeah, same with the, the super glue on the ventilation. The fumes, if you use lots of that stuff, can get a bit brutal. Yeah, and for God's sake, yeah, never, ever put hot glue onto a wet pool of super glue. Yeah, you will vaporize the super glue and it becomes attached to your eyes. It fixes to the moisture in your eyes as you look over it. And so basically, you get a grit texture over your eyes. It hurts lots, never, yeah? It's like, think of it like a mogwai and feeding it after midnight. You just don't do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, seriously. This is coming from experience, guys. Yeah, I couldn't see for like a day. Yeah, I was really worried. Yeah, so never ever hit, hit watch glue, uh, super glue with hot glue. To be truthful, yeah, hot glue and PVA, no problem at all. Yeah, I've never had an issue with that. Yeah, I've never tried to hit any other glue with hot glue. Yeah, but don't, not, not super glue. So there's your tip on super glue. We're bouncing about a bit, but it was important. Safety first. Yeah, you don't want to stick your eyes together, guys. Trust me, it doesn't help with terrain building. Right, so we've, we've talked about plastic glues because there's not much more I can say about plastic glues when it comes to terrain building. Yes, right, so PVO did it, did it. Spray adhesives, right, spray adhesives, yeah. You get all sorts of spray adhesives. Generally, they're, they're rubber paints, or really they're latex paints, which you know we'll talk about you know, next. But you can get all sorts of spray adhesives. Yeah, uh, I showed them off in the Flux and Fology and Terrain Lab videos. We did a whole load of tests for them. Right, spray adhesives mainly come in when you're trying to flock things which would be a pain in the backside to apply glue to any other way. So think of things like wire wool, think of things like rubberized horsehair, which is used for shrubs and bushes and hedges. I should do a video on that. I've got some in there. I'll do a video on that at some point, guys. Yeah, trees. Yeah, so you know your bottle brush trees. Yeah, you give them a good spray with the, with the what you call it, the fast tack. Yeah, it coats it all down. Yeah, and then you stick it in your, in your flock 
give it a good shake and they come out flocked looking like trees. Well, looking like bottle trees, which is a type of tree, and we'll do a video on that as well. I've got everything I need, so we'll do, do one on that. But anyway, yeah, so the real benefit of these is one, yeah, they're really good at spraying things, which, you know, lots of fibres, lots of difficult to get to, because it's very much like using, you know, a spray primer to do something like that. You know what it's like when you look at something that you think that's going to be a pain in the backside to, to paint, you know, a, a colour onto it, it'd be easy just to spray it. Yeah, as I say, they are a rubber based ones, which means, yeah, they are water resistant as well, which means these work well, yeah, for working with PVA, yeah, with sealing. So, you know, you do your clump foliage, you do your, your, your flocking, you, you, you know, and then once it's all dry and set, you can hit it with watered down PVA and you know all the bits aren't going to fall off, yeah. Uh, you'll see, are you, are you noticing a balance with what glues we use for what and this sort of water balance and strength and, and sort of fixing difficult, against difficult surfaces? That's where all the glues come into it. That's the interesting stuff. But I digress. Right, so as I said, yeah, one thing to consider is they are a shotgun glue. And by shotgun glue, 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 glue shotgun glue, <laughs> blue, blue shotgun blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, you basically, you're getting a blast. Expect no precision with this stuff. Simple as, yeah, just give it a blast. Yeah, so you can't use them on any precision work. Yeah, that being said, yeah, the next one we talk about, you can. Yeah, so these are like, like say, the difficult, the, 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 the substructures, you know, the trees, those sort of things, that's the application for these. And, you know, they're a couple of quid a can, and a can will last you a fair while. Okay, just make sure that when you're using it, yeah, you turn it upside down, fire out, what you call it, fire out the excess, yeah, using the propellant that sort of sits at the top of the can when it's upside down to clear out the nozzle, because these are a rubber at the end of the day, so if they set in the nozzle, you've got no hope of clearing it. You can't blast it through, it's as simple as that. So be aware of that, guys. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is do, you know, 30 seconds of spray and put your nearly full can, you know, back down and realise you've blocked it. Okay. Generally, I, I actually, you know, as I'm spraying, as I'm finishing, I'll, I'll turn the can upside down and, and sort of spray the extra remnants on whatever I'm spraying until it sprays clear. Yeah. So that's to be aware. Now the next one we want to sort of talk about is latex glues are proper. Now this is, these are latex glues, but this is a special application of them. Yeah, with the other latex glues, you're looking at things like uh, copy decks, uh, tough glue, which is carpet tackifier that Lee from Warpaint, who does flop box stuff, uses and sells. Yeah, you've got the hobby tack from Woodland Scenics. That's a stay tacky latex glue. Okay. Once again, the benefits of these sort of glues is one, they're flexible. Yeah, in general, so you can put splodges down of copy decks, you can flock them, and then you can peel them off, and they're actually sort of flexible and elastic, yeah? The other benefit is they are water resistant, so we're going back to sealing with PVA again. Yeah, so as you know, I used, in, in my last video, I used Hobby Tack, which is the inspiration for this video. I used Hobby Tack to uh, stick foliage to, to walls to make ivy, yeah, that I could then come back in and seal with watered down PVA and none of it fell off, okay, none of it that was stuck to the actual Hobby Tack. Now, latex glues, they come in a variety of stickiness. You've got some that cure, yeah, and simply dry, yeah, you've got others that, uh, when airtight, stay tacky, so the stuff like the carpet tack fire, where it's exposed to air, it will completely sort of cure, yeah, which means when you're making your grass tufts and your diorama tufts, yeah, that's brilliant, because once all your bits are stuck in, it's fine. But where it's stuck to, say, a piece of acetate, yeah, and no air's getting to it, it remains tacky under there, so you get self-adhesive tufts. We've done a video of, that, of making those in, in the foliaging list, so, you know, you can go check that out. It's in the foliage playlist, guys. Yeah, uh, self-adhesive flower tufts. Yeah, uh, the stay tacky latex glues, yeah, these are the ones that even when they're exposed to air, stay tacky. And the real benefit of that is, you know, when you're making things like these trees, yeah, oh, pull these bits off. Yeah, you can apply it all over, wait till it goes clear, and then come in. I mean, these were made, what, a week ago? And there's a gap there, and I can see it glycerine. And if I very quickly get this clump that I pulled off the other bit, 
Yeah, I know for a fact I can come in, I can touch that there, and that's stuck. Yeah, weeks later. Okay, and this is another one of those benefits that when you're working on a project like this, which is really difficult, really fiddly with wet glues, yeah, these sort of stay tacky adhesives, yeah, and you don't need the, the Woodland Scenics one, there's plenty of sort of hobby, cheaper ones out there, yeah, just do a search on, on what you've got on the Google, yeah, but when you're working with these sort of difficult ones where a liquid glue would, you know, bits would be falling off as you're working with it, where a hot glue would, what could it be, loads of wisps and difficult, uh, you know, a gel super glue would be messy as, you know, the nature of it and handling it. The Staytacic latex glues are brilliant for this sort of stuff, absolutely brilliant, yeah? So, that's the, the sort of latex glues, you know, and like I say, the benefits is, you know, the ability to work long term, the water resistance of them, yeah, and... Yeah, that, that sort of rounds up the latex glues, you know, the liquid ones. I should throw a shout out for sort of, you know, this is Mod Podge. This is essentially, yeah, a sort of like a glossy PVA with an acrylic base, yeah. Now, it, we use it for gloss effects, we use it for wave effects on water, but it is a glue, okay. Generally, we don't use it as a glue. The reason being is it's quite expensive. Yeah, I can, and we can get the same sort of glue in, yeah, with cheaper alternatives than we can get with that. So I just want, I spotted that and thought, oh, I should mention that. So, we talked about, yeah, talked about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right, we've got just two more sort of glues to sort of talk about. Now, they're the ones that I don't have here. The first ones are the two-part epoxy glues, yeah? And these are glues where it's two chemical compounds that when they mix together become a glue. Yeah, they generally are incredibly strong, yeah? I'll be honest, don't really use them, haven't had much need for them. Yeah, I do know a couple of people who've used them, uh, people who are working with large, heavy resin stuck kits, yeah? You know, it's good glue for that, far better than super glue. Yeah, and also people who are doing large heavy work, but they're doing lots of it. So if you imagine you've got a large cliff face, okay, that you're going to dress with cast rocks. Yeah, you can apply one sort of side of the epoxy to the cliff face, you can put the other part of the epoxy onto your rocks, and you can do that in sort of like a methodical fashion. And then once you've applied it all, you can then go back and start positioning, which sort of saves that going back and forwards, yeah? But like I say, I've never really used them, guys, to be perfectly honest, you know? Very little use. I, 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 I don't feel the need to have them, yeah? So don't worry about them, yeah? Uh, second one are grip adhesives. Now grip adhesives are anything from like no more nails to industrial grips. The stuff that builders use for sticking things together. Yeah, typically they're dispensed in those sort of trigger guns. Okay, which makes them um, not so much of a shotgun as the sort of spray cans, but nowhere near as fine control as the other methods. Yeah, they're used for bulk work, yeah. Cost wise, Mm, you can get them pretty cheap to be perfectly honest and you know they don't warp generally they're designed to be water resistant they're sturdy yeah if you're knocking out a lot of terrain and you're doing a lot of projects and you are literally railroading them you know you're mass producing them then grip adhesives make sense yeah you can get all sorts quick drying ones yeah absolutely all sorts because it's the building trade do you know what I mean it's their professional adhesives but generally, unless you railroad, you know, unless you're doing massive projects and lots of them, yeah, you don't need grip adhesives. Okay, so they're the sort of two glues that I haven't really got because I don't really need them. And you've seen how much terrain I make, yeah. Now, these are the glues I do consider sort of essential, yeah. I'll put the airbrush aside, you know, because you know that is an essential, you know, sort of throwing that off. And to be perfectly honest, you know, you don't really need a, a 12 mil one if you've got, you know a 7 mil one because you can just squirt a bigger blob yeah the latex glue is very important yeah you know the self the, the watch it the uh, air drying ones so all the latex glues are important pva is godsend yeah uh spray adhesives good with flux and foliage in super glues yeah you spot glue and like i say hot glue is a, an absolute blinder so that's it breathe 29 minutes wow 29 minutes virtually non-stop talking about glues, 
That's a good one. Anyway, right, I think that winds it up. Listen, as always, guys, yeah, if you've got any other questions, throw them below. I always answer my comments, so you you know use the comments, guys. But if you've got anything to add, any other glues, you know, you think I should check out, because like I say, I haven't tried any other glues other than this, throw them down below in the comments for me, guys. So, you know, let's make it a resource, yeah, help people out. Now, I am busy, I've got a couple of projects on, I'm working through the art board and an, another sort of really shiny board, but I need to get further down the process on those before I've got more vids coming, so, you know, more vids coming real soon, but I'm not telling you what they are just yet. Uh, finally, guys, yeah, obviously, like it if you've liked it, if you've stuck with me this far, yeah, you, you've got to have liked what you've heard. Yeah, give it a share if you think someone would find it helpful, you know, throw a comment down below, have a chat with me, and as always, yeah, if you really like my stuff, guys, consider Patreon, you know, it really helps me out, yeah, you, you get all, well, you get my undying support, and you get all the access to all the live show archives as well, guys, so, you know, there's a little reward in it for you, but, as always, you know, don't feel pressured, because, you know, this is what I do, and this is what I'll keep doing, yeah, we'll keep doing it. Right, until, you know, the next video, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, I will say happy gluing, guys. I hope you found it helpful. And, you know, if you need me, catch me in the comments. All the best, yeah. Tell her.